Welcome back to Homesteading with the Zimmermans, where we work hard and play hard on our little corner of land in Iowa. My husband and I were born and raised Old Order Mennonite, or Horse and Buggy Mennonite, as some refer to them as. And although we are no longer part of that culture or community, we are intentional about passing on the old-fashioned skills of our childhood to the next generation. Good morning, friends. Today is Monday. It's actually Labor Day. I had this idea while I was picking all these tomatoes that I am going to make a video titled Labor Day on the homestead. <laughs> I, I was inspired by the fact that, that this morning after chores and at breakfast table, of course, nobody has school or work today. And we were all sitting around and you know, what is Labor Day? Well, it's the working man's vacation is what we told the children and they wondered why we were still going to work. Well, part of the reason we're not taking Labor Day as a vacation is on Friday and Saturday of this week, we have our annual school fundraiser, which brings thousands of people to our little town. And we are, of course, you know, the school parents are in charge of the food and feeding everybody. So whatever we don't get done today and tomorrow probably won't get done on the homestead this week. And I knew with the forecast being in the upper 90s, I've got to get these tomatoes processed. And But do you remember a couple weeks ago how I pruned my tomatoes to see if they would get ripe faster? And I did not expect to get six get 30 gallons of tomatoes this week so today's video is just going to be all the work we do on the homestead and not positive what i'm going to turn all these tomatoes into but i'm going to start with pasta sauce because that is what i still need on my shelf so i've got all the tomatoes picked elvin has taken all the boys and they've gone to the city to get more supplies to work on the patio and Hadassah is hanging the laundry out to dry and I am down here picking tomatoes and I've got the peppers left to pick. The onions are already picked and up drying in the garage. So all I've got left to pick is the peppers and probably the basil and then we're going to start processing these tomatoes. All right, there we go. We've got five buckets of tomatoes, one bucket of peppers, and now I gotta pick the basil. But I'm a big fan of letting my things in the garden until I'm ready to process them, rather than picking what's ripe every day, because I like to get it from the garden into the jars with as little time elapsed as possible. So I don't like to pick my tomatoes and put them in the freezer or let them set for until I have enough to can because I don't want to lose all those nutrients. So I'm not the type to come to the garden every morning and see what needs to be harvested and then preserve it. I will keep an eye on things and then when I think I have enough, I will do a big preserving day. And kind of like those peppers, they could have been picked weeks ago, but I also knew that they would be perfectly fine still on the stock and that they would, I'll harvest them when I'm ready to use them because I don't want to harvest them, preserve them, and then have to get them out of the freezer to make my pasta sauce if they're going to be perfectly fine on the stock. And the same with the tomatoes. Um, when you see the tomatoes are ripe, Usually you have about a week before they start to go bad. Um, so all of last week, I knew these tomatoes were gonna be ready. And, um, but I would rather than come and pick the ones that are ripe every morning, I'll just let them all hang because they are, they are okay on the vine and keeping their nutrients and rather than picking them and putting them on my counter until I collect enough to can. So that's kind of my take on it. Let it on the plant as long as you possibly can because that's the best way to get as many nutrients as you can. All 
I think I'm going to go get the skid loader to haul these all up to the house because this cart is quite heavy and everybody else is otherwise busy so I don't have any help to take this up to the house. We are getting started on our pasta sauce and in the description of this video I will put a printable recipe for the pasta sauce and I'm gonna follow it as closely as I can for your sake <laughs> but I have been making pasta sauce canning pasta sauce for my family for over 20 years um, so if you see me doing things a little differently than what the recipe says, just know that I'm okay. I know what it should taste like and look like when it's ready to go into the jars. And I don't always have all the proper ingredients and I might skimp on some. Um, but I'll also link you, I think I have two other videos making pasta sauce, maybe just one. And we use this pasta sauce I call it tomato sauce or pasta sauce. We use it for pizzas, for spaghetti, and as marinara sauce. So that is why I need so much of it. And I today we are just going to run everything through my Vitamix blender, skins and seeds and everything, um, rather than put it through our Victorio strainer like we have in some of our other videos, um, just because this method seems to be faster for us. Um, but if you want to, you could even put them through the colander um, if you don't have such a large batch. Remember that food mill that I used for my grapes? You could put your tomatoes and onions and peppers through that and then you'd have a nice puree to start your pasta sauce with. So, we've got everything cleaned up here. I'm going to start with cleaning some tomatoes. I'm going to get that basil out of the sun. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to core, I'm going to core each tomato and then I'm going to cut it to make it easier for the blender to blend it up. And some of these little ones, I'm just not even going to core. I'm just going to take the green off. And if they have spots on, I'm going to cut the spots out. So now we're just going to throw them in the blender and blend them all up. Skins and seeds and everything. Um, but like I said, if you're not comfortable using the skins and seeds, then by all means use a food mill and remove the skins and seeds. And then we're just going to pour all the juice into our biggest pot. And we kept track of how much juice we were adding to the pot so that we would know how many other ingredients to add to our tomato juice. So we turn the heat on as soon as we've got some juice in the pot to get that started heating and then we just keep working through these buckets and buckets full of beautiful tomatoes, washing them and then coring them and blending them. So now that we've got one pot full of tomato juice or blended tomatoes, 
in our large pot we have between seven and eight gallons of tomato juice so it's time to add the rest of our veggies starting with the peppers and Hadassah is over here peeling the onions we need roughly one pound of onion per gallon of tomato juice so one, two, three, four, five, six. My onions were all right under a pound each, so that was fairly easy for us to count. So I've dipped some of my tomato juice out of my pot, and I'm gonna use that as the liquid to start blending all the peppers that we need. So now I'm gonna do the same with the onions. I've got a little bit of juice. I'm gonna put my whole onions in there. Well, actually, they're not completely whole. I chopped them up a little bit. So this is the last of the veggies that I have to add. I've got all my peppers and all my onions in, and now I'm adding my garlic. And I'm gonna put my basil in here too. So we've got all our veggies in here. Tomatoes, peppers, onions, garlic, and basil. Now we need our salt and my oregano. And then we're ready to start tasting it and cooking it down. So once I think I have the flavors about right, I bring it to a full rolling boil. I leave the lid off and let the moisture evaporate and cook it down until it becomes thick. So the thing with tomato paste is you can add as much or as little as you want. I've even done it without tomato paste and it's been okay. The only difference that it will make is you will need to cook it down longer because when you add the tomato paste, your, spaghetti, your pasta sauce will get thick faster. Um, so I don't have quite, in, quite enough tomato paste today. The recipe asks for quite a bit more than I have, but that's okay. I'll just plan on cooking it longer until it's the consistency that I want. Well, it looks like the menfolk are home with their supplies. You got all the olive oil for me? Yep. All right. So you can see how, how much this has reduced and how nice and thick it is. And this one has a little ways to go yet. But I think we're gonna start canning this one. And Elvin and the boys got me olive oil, so I'm going to add some of that before I can it.
Hi. You working hard? You did. Since today's temperatures are in the upper 90s, we need to make sure that the pigs' as wallow stays full of water so they can stay cool. So because my pasta sauce is hot and now I want to water bath it, I need um, hot water in my water bath canner. So because I only have cold water out here, I've got some water in here and I am heating it up until it's warm so that I can put my jars in to hot water bath them. Some people do not um, hot water bath their pasta sauce as long as they ladle it boiling hot into the jars and they don't hot water bath it. Um, but that's called hot packing because you pack it into the jars when it's hot and then it creates a vacuum as it cools. I have found my jars stay sealed longer if I hot water bath them. So my water in my canner, my water bath canner, is getting hot, hot enough where I know the temperature difference isn't so great that it's gonna cause my jars to burst. Okay, I'll know where you're at. That's right, thank you. I didn't have quite enough water in here, so I'm just gonna add a little bit of cold water. So every time I show a video of hot water bathing, I get comments on why I don't cover my jars with water. I do not cover my jars with water because I was taught that that causes siphoning and you can get water inside your jars. My mom and grandma taught me to just bring the water to the product line and that is good enough. That's what you're going to do? He wants me to turn that way because he's going to look I, right there. I wouldn't try driving it once. So we kept working on the pasta sauce until we had used up all the tomatoes. And the boys kept working at the ceiling to the covered patio. And then, of course, before the day is done, it's time to do chores again.
So all in all, it was a great Labor Day here on the homestead. Hadassah and I got 55 quarts of pasta sauce to put in our cold room. And thank you all to everybody that watches and supports our channel. And remember, God is good all the time.